Eggs are a staple food worldwide. We use them in ice cream, mayonnaise, pasta, flan, you name it. One reason why this is, is because of their high protein content, which is why the United States Department of Agriculture used to classify eggs as meat. But who can complain? After all, protein is a super important part of every person's diet. Not only that, protein is super important in biology as well. One of the four classes of macromolecules, and arguably the most important one, proteins are instrumental in nearly everything an organism does. Today, we'll explore the molecular structure of amino acids, how they fold into proteins, and a few key examples of protein structure and function. Amino acids are the basic monomer of which all proteins are constructed. They come in 20 different variations. Now, let's take a look at the general formula for an amino acid. At the center is an asymmetric carbon atom called the alpha carbon. We call it asymmetric because it's bound to four different groups of atoms. An amino group, a carboxyl group, a hydrogen atom, and lastly, a side chain. This side chain, or R group, varies among amino acids and is what differentiates the 20 amino acids from each other. Polymers, or long chains of amino acids, are called polypeptides. To link amino acids together, the hydroxyl on an amino acid's carbox group combines with a hydrogen on another amino group to form water. This water molecule is released, creating a peptide bond linking these amino acids together. This process is called dehydration synthesis. This process is repeated over and over in order to form longer polypeptides. The beginning of the polypeptide, or where the amino group on the first amino acid is still exposed, is called the end terminus, while the end, or where the carbox group on the last amino acid is still exposed, is called the C terminus. Now, proteins can be made up of one or more distinct polypeptide chains. Just so we're clear, polypeptide and protein is not synonymous. Imagine a polypeptide like a single thread of yarn, whereas a protein is like a sweater that can be knit from that yarn. A functional protein isn't just a polypeptide chain, but one or more, precisely folded, twisted, and coiled into a molecule of unique shape. The amino acid sequence of each polypeptide in a protein determines how it will fold into a functional protein. Scientists have devised four different ways to describe a protein's structure. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. The primary structure of a protein simply describes the amino acid sequence in its polypeptides. For example, the protein transthyretin's primary structure is shown here. Each three-letter symbol represents an amino acid. Secondary structure describes how polypeptide chains form helices due to interactions between the backbone of the polypeptide. For instance, an alpha helix is formed when hydrogen bonding occurs between every fourth amino acid. Tertiary structure describes how polypeptides fold into three-dimensional shapes due to interactions with side chains, or R groups. An example of tertiary structure would be hydrophobic interaction. As a polypeptide folds, amino acids with hydrophobic side chains cluster up at the core of the protein. Quaternary structure describes overall protein structure that results from the aggregation of multiple polypeptides. Hemoglobin is a protein that exemplifies quaternary structure. It's made up of four polypeptides that associate with each other in order to form the characteristic shape of a red blood cell. A key concept in biology is that structure determines function and this is really obvious in several proteins. Going back to our example about red blood cells, hemoglobin structure is specialized for carrying oxygen. Four helical polypeptide subunits in hemoglobin associate with four heme complexes. These heme complexes contain an iron atom, which binds and releases oxygen whenever this particular red blood cell is in the lungs or in the tissues. Another example of structure determining function would be in collagen, Collagen is a fibrous protein that is the main component of connective tissue. Three long helical polypeptides intertwine with each other to form collagen, giving it great strength due to this rope-like structure. This rope-like structure suits its function as the supports for skin, bone, tendons, 
ligaments, and more. Today, we looked at the structure of amino acids, how to describe protein structure, and how protein structure correlates to function. See you next time!